My name is Steve Sillett. I'm a professor of forestry at Humboldt State University. We are in Montgomery Woods State Reserve, an old growth redwood forest in Mendocino County, and we're studying the forest. We're installing 16 one hectare plots throughout the state. And we're putting these in the reserves from Jedediah Smith to Big Sur along the coast, and all the way from Calaveras Big Trees to the Freeman Creek Grove, which is well south of Mountain Home in the Sierra Nevada. And so 16 total plots. We climb these trees to measure their structure. So we're interested not just in how big the trunk is at ground level. We want to know how big the trunk is at all the heights, all the way to the treetop. We want to know the total height of the tree, if it's got a lean. We want to know every branch. So we measure the diameter, height, angle, slope, extension, and number of forks on every branch in the tree. 11.25 circumference. So by the time we're done with our sampling, we will be able to reconstruct the tree in three dimensions on the computer and then solve for surface area, volume, mass, the number of leaves, all these things that we want to know about the tree. So we basically do a complete structural inventory of the tree, and then we dissect the tree further down to smallest parts all the way to the leaf. So these ancient redwoods, these trees that are pushing 2,000 years of age, are incredibly complicated trees structurally. So we measure the entire crown so that we can calculate accurately what's its surface area. And why is it important to know surface area? Because the trees grow from their surface. They don't grow from the center out. They grow from the out, out. So just beneath the bark, there's the cambium, and it slowly advances. So if you know the surface area of the tree, you know the surface across which the tree's producing wood. So in each plot, we climb and measure three to six trees, depending on how gnarly they are. The really big redwoods take a lot more time. In this forest, Montgomery Woods, the trees are tall, but they're not very gnarly. They're pretty simple. Whoa. But we did have one tree that had 472 branches and 206 segments in it, which took about four days. So uh, in this forest, we, cho we always choose the tallest tree in the plot and the largest tree. Here's the view from 44 meters. Tree's 111.6. And then we choose trees that are smaller in different ways. So we want to get some trees that are young and out in a gap growing fast. And we want to get some trees that are underneath the shade of a towering neighbor and they've been suppressed their whole life. So we're trying to tell the story of the whole forest, but one tree at a time. It may or may not be true that as trees get taller, they become more vulnerable. We do know that as trees become taller, they have, they have to sustain more stress from the water that has to be pulled against gravity and against friction to their top. So the trees, tall trees are under a great, greater degree of water stress than short trees just by virtue of their height. And we suspect that the really tall trees, the tallest trees in the world, are among the most sensitive things to climate change. And so that's what we're looking at. 231.9. So we have 175 redwoods now in the world that are over 350 feet tall. And every year we remeasure the height. Some years there's a lot of growth and some years there's almost no growth. And sometimes there's dieback and recovery. So it's just, we're trying to get a handle on what are the limits to how tall they can get, but also how vulnerable the tallest trees are to climate change. It's not like climate change is new. Climate is always changing to some degree. It's just the speed with which it's changing now. And I think that the, the trees are responding to these changes and because they're so long lived, we can get a sense of how unusual are these climate changes we're observing now compared to what the trees have experienced over the last thousand to two thousand years. So I don't think we need to be like freaking out about this, but I think it's important that we look at it because it's very possible that the environmental conditions that sustain these redwood forests will change in a way 
that no longer would be able to sustain the same forest. We nearly did lose the redwood forests to logging. 95 to 96 percent of this old growth redwood forest has been cut. So we have this four or five percent remaining, thanks in large part to the Save the Redwoods League. So at this point, I think the battle to save the redwoods has been fought and mostly lost. And these parks and reserves are all we have left to remind us of this forest that used to be. So to lose it now would be an unthinkable calamity.